big revelation in Ark Knights Episode 4, we finally find out why the Doctor is so important. <laughs> the secret weapon that the Doctor yields, and that is his ability to throw rocks. <laughs> Watch out, Reunion. The Doctor's got rocks. But no, jokes aside, excellent episode. Unfortunately, like I've mentioned before, this is technically halfway through this series. I, at this point, really hope that they adapt more of this series because I'm still eating it up and it really does feel like we're finally starting to really ramp things up with this episode. It seems like besides just introducing Lungman as another city and how different that city is compared to Chernobog, we're also technically introducing that there's a bigger... <laughs> conflict that might arise, or at least we're in hinting at it. And I'll get into that when we get around to that. But yeah, open up the episode, we have Amiya and Dr. Rose Island arriving at Lungmen. They obviously get ambushed when they're first coming in. That's when we meet Black Steel, which is this group that apparently is some sort of mercenaries for hire. They're not a part of Rhodes Island, but they're assisting them. And upon arriving at the checkpoint to go into Lungman, that's when we meet Chin, who is a part of the guard of Lungman. And this gives us a sense of what's happening at the border itself. We indicated in the last episode or previous episodes that there was a lot of refugees coming to Lungman from Chernobog. And despite the fact they treat the infected not as harshly as Chernobog, but <laughs> almost equally, these people are fleeing there because they have nowhere else to turn to. And they're being immediately turned away. And it's because there's a huge influx of citizens coming from Chernobog at the same time infected are slipping in with them. And as Chen mentions later on, they're having to turn people away because yes, they have to protect their citizens. Despite the fact they want to help everybody, they can't. They, they still have their citizens to account for. But additionally, as we find out later, the reunion are slipping in as well. And that's obviously becoming a big threat to them, which that's again, what Amia, the doctor and Calcit is actually there to talk about. So yes, after bringing Amia in <laughs> late to the meeting, <laughs> We find out that Amya has never been here before because she's super excited about these tall skyscrapers. It's, it's interesting to note that each of these mobile cities could possibly have different technologies and advancements in them. Again, technically with Chernobog, it felt like more like a rundown, I don't know, Middle Eastern looking style. Whereas, yes, Longman's like huge, massive skyscrapers, almost like a bustling metropolitan. But additionally, in coming in here, we do find from Chin that it doesn't seem like she's like 100% happy with what's going on. She's, again, is hinting at the idea that we're just trying to protect our citizens. That's our first priority. But yes, when they get to the meeting, that's when we first meet uh, Dr. Calcit, who is from Rhodes Island. Additionally, Wei, who seems to be the head of the city. And this is where we get a sense of what Rhodes Island's contract with Lungman is supposed to be. They want to offer to help them with the reunion. They want to band together, the two of them fighting side by side. As the contract is more specified later on that it's not as simple as us giving you information to fight back against the Rhodes Island and with the situation at hand. What Rhodes Island is offering is their combat experience and their ability to fight the reunion. They've fought them before and they can do it again. Which I thought was interesting because immediately Wei's like, you know, look, I don't stand by somebody unless I know that they can stand by me. So they look at this footage of them coming into the city, fighting the reunion outside, and they immediately go, yeah, these guys aren't a threat. You're not going to offer us anything the guards can't do. And my mind immediately went to it. I was, I'm glad that it kind of transitioned into it. Is I'm like, yeah, but the footage you're watching is them being ambushed by randos. <laughs> The concern here is the commanders of the reunion. Those are the ones that are the threat. That was the only threat that we really had from the first couple episodes wasn't really the, the random reunion guards. It was the commanders. It was Mephisto. It was Faust. It was Crown Slayer. I think she was one as well. Those are the ones that are a threat. Talula is a threat. And yes, that's what eventually <laughs> Amia brings up. It's like, no, you're going to, uh, well, technically Doctor brings up, uh, Dr. Kalsitz, like, you know, look, you guys are going to be wiped out within a week. They're like, well, what proof do you have? We met her. We met Talaha, the one that's actually leaving devastation and charred remains behind her. That's what the reunion have. That's what you need us for. And that's ultimately what really sways Wei's mind. It wasn't that they're going to protect them from randos because essentially there is another aspect to this whole decision, this, this agreement. It didn't really get into exactly what that agreement was, what what they were requiring of Lungman. My assumption is that it's for them to change their policies around the infected. That was, cause that was one of the initial things that was brought up is that the way that you guys handle the infected, it's gonna cause problems. You're going to see problems from the union because of how you're handling the infected. You need to change your policies. And that was the only thing that was really brought up that Wei didn't like. And so I'm assuming that's part of the agreement because he says it has a high cost. Is it to bring in the infected? Is it how to treat the infected? Is it allowing them to help them with the infected? That would be my assumption because that seems what, what 
Rhodes Island's all about. But there was also another thing that seemed to sway Wei's mind. It was a very ominous statement made by Calcet. She said the other issue is what Ursus Empire's next move will be now that they have lost Chernobog. She says, you understand what I mean. And I'm like, this is like a very ominous statement. This seems like a very, very ominous statement. What that's implying to me is that she believes and what she's insinuating to weigh, and it seems like it's ultimately what ends up making him make this decision in the end, is that there's a possibility that Ursus, now having lost Chernobog, will come to get resources or people from Lungman. That Lungman's going to be the target of the Ursus his empire now. And so they need to be allies. My only question mark at this point is why would Rose Island be okay with being an ally of a faction or an empire? Because it seems like they're best fit to be some sort of neutral party that can go to each location. So them completely forming some sort of contract and partnership with Lungmen, it's kind of questionable. But I guess technically if they see that they will never ever make any sort of partnership with Ursus Empire, Lungman might be their only option. But yes, Wei accepts the contract, but under two stipulations. The first is that they do help them wipe out all of the reunion from Lungman. And if they can pull that off, they will agree to their side of it. But additionally, one other thing, but he's not gonna mention it until they're done, <laughs> which is okay. I mean, what choice do you have at that point? But it seems like Amiya puts a counter to that and the idea that they both understand the stipulations of their contract that any interpretation of the clauses is agreed by both parties what seems to work out so very interesting but even still it's like we have this victory and Amiya is kind of happy and relieved and she's like man I was so nervous and <laughs> Dr. Calcet's still like well don't get too excited yet because we're talking about apparently his title is way the cunning so he's apparently been known to be very cunning which that would make sense in what he's saying I'll agree to it as long as you pull everything off. Like, is that one of those things where you go, well, I, we seen a reunion guy way on the east side, so obviously you didn't take out all of them, so no contract. But still, Amiya did pull it off, so that was, a, that was a good thing. And this is where we get a sense that, yes, technically, Dr. Calcet does know the doctor. Says, it's the first time we're meeting, but no greeting. Welcome back. So it does imply at least that Calcet's happy the doctor's back. Still putting weight to him, just like several other people like Doberman has, and the idea that I hope the sacrifice is made to get you is worth it. This is where we transition to getting a little bit of building around Lungman itself. Obviously, again, the treatment of the infected isn't really good in this area. It seems as if there's this one infected called Misha who is on the run, and she was trying to protect some kids, and Amiya and Doctor end up running into those kids. And yes, like I said before, <laughs> Doctor employs his his dangerous rocks to fight off these bad guys before Amiya steps up and blasts them. I really, again, I cannot state enough how much I love the directing in the show. I love that shot where this guy walks up to Doctor and you have this very downward pointing angle from the perspective of this guy. And then suddenly this little cute little bunny girl walks in front of him and yet... Boom. I love it. I, I love it. They really nailed that perspective and the scaling of that shot. But yeah, these kids asked them to help Misha. She's in trouble and makes it very clear that these poor children have no place to go to. So it seems like there is at least a homeless issue in this area. But additionally, Amiya eventually runs back into the Black Steel and they're apparently working for Chen now <laughs> while they're there. And they're supposed to look for this undocumented infected, which ends up being Misha. And so Amiya overhearing this is like, hey, why are you after this girl? We're looking for her too. Chin's like, doesn't matter to you. Don't get involved. But yes, of course, she's gonna get involved. This is interesting because technically Black Steel has been officially ordered by Chin to find Misha and to bring her in. But yet Amiya seemingly is able to talk them into helping her bring Misha under their custody. So it seems like despite the fact that Black Steel is working as a mercenary group, this is implying that at least they have some sort of stronger relationship with Rhodes Island, which would allow them to allow Amiya to take Misha under Rhodes Island uh, custody. Now, I don't know. It, it just seems like it was implying the idea that they were allowing Amiya to take her instead. If we open up the next episode and they go to Chin with, with Misha, then we'll see. But it does seem like, yes, Misha is terrified of them. She knows how this area treats the infected. So she doesn't want to have anything to do with them. But Amiya, obviously using the fact that she's infected as well, which I was, I was wondering when she was going to do that. I'm like, just show her your stinking arm. <laughs> this girl's like screaming, which by the way, her voicing was absolutely fantastic. Like it, it hurt hearing how like panicked she was. Like, no, I know what you do to the, the, the infected. I won't let you take me. But again, Amiya was specifically saying the Rhodes Island is here to help you. We want to help you. So again, I think they're going to allow Rhodes Island to take her, which I guess technically you can say that they pretty much did their job. If they tell Chin, hey, look, uh, Rhodes Island has custody of them. We found her, but she's in custody right now with Amiya. Nothing we can do about it. And yeah, that kind of concludes with 
um, a brief shot of outside the building they're in, and there's Reunion watching them. One that has, like, these gigantic, I don't know, grenade launchers in both hands, which we've seen in the intro. Which, technically, by this point, we've we pretty much seen every character that's in the intro in the show so far. I think the only one is there's two other ones that I think are implied to be a part of Blackstill. And then there's one Oni chick that I think is a part of Chin's group, the Lungman Guard. So we pretty much showed every character that's in the intro um, with this episode. And so which makes me believe, like, again, we've pretty much established that this is probably where the big pinnacle point of the story goes. Because I think from this point on, it's going to get into, yes, the reunion's attack on Lungman, them fighting back against Lungman. And possibly towards a later part, hinting at Ursus Empire wanting to be in conflict with Longman. But I think the overall conflict here that we've pretty much established is the next four episodes is probably going to be Reunion versus Longman and Rhodes Island protecting Longman and possibly helping Longman somehow with how they treat the infected. Because again, that's what exactly Dr. Kalsid is really saying. You need to change how you're dealing with the infected. Because I think the overall story has really been pressing heavily on the idea that, again, the Reunion isn't terrible. Like, the people of Reunion aren't terrible people. That's why whenever Rose Island defeat the Reunion, they always capture them. They don't kill them. The idea is that they're mad. The Reunion is mad, and that's why they're doing what they're doing. And that's exactly what the doctor's, Dr. Calcet's telling Way. You have to change your policies because all you're doing is fueling exactly why they hate you. You need to change how you treat the infected. Stop treating them like they're secondhand citizens. Stop treating them like they're, they're monsters. It's ex <laughs> exactly what Hami had faced today. Somebody calling her a monster once again. That was technically because she was using arts, but yes. Anyhow, fantastic episode. I now have two cute cat girls. <laughs> so... I found out last episode that apparently everybody calls Ami a donkey girl or something like that, uh, which is kind of funny because it seems like the show repeatedly likes to call her Usagi-chan. They really want to establish that she's a rabbit. But yeah, looking forward to more. Really enjoyed Franca, by the way. Uh, Liskarm, really enjoyed those two characters. Really hoping that we get more of them in the future as well. But yeah. Can't wait for more. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. As always, if you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Additionally, if you're new to the channel and you have not already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I greatly appreciate everybody that does. Additionally, there's a link down below for Discord, which we have a great community of people there if you want to talk about anime in general. I might be making an Ark Knights channel here soon, just so I could just post art from Ark Knights. But I hope you all enjoyed, and y'all take care.